Sandwell, West Midlands, an area where the local authority have had to think hard about ways of improving standards in mathematics, where today we're going to look at their problems with problem solving. Previously, this class has had quite a negative attitude towards maths, in particular their problem solving skills. Um, they found the lessons quite boring, they weren't engaged at all. Um, and I really wanted something to come in to help me understand how to engage them, how to make the lessons far more interactive, far more enjoyable, and make it so the children are left wanting to carry on. In 2004, Sandwell came up with the Teacher of the Future, a support programme which focuses on improving maths. The scheme supports primary class teachers with an emphasis on planning with an experienced mentor, using technology to improve lessons, and team teaching. It's like working in a systematic order. Today, Pally Nahal, a leading teacher for maths, has come into school to share her plan for a problem-solving lesson that she believes will have a real impact on Becky's class. What would you like me to focus on? Well, one of the things I've been thinking that we've been having trouble is, is when we do problems, sort mm -hmm. of problem solving, they've been finding it hard to do it in any sort of order. We decided that we'd focus on problem solving and finding all possibilities within problem solving. The pupils had had a go before and they didn't achieve what Becky would have liked them to achieve by the end of that lesson. They, they had negative attitudes, they were like, oh, we're doing problem solving again, miss. So it was changing their perception of it. Well, what are they doing at the moment? Is it just random? At the moment it's just completely random. They're just so they're guessing things. and they don't, they're not checking at the end whether they're checking for repeats or whether they've got all the answers. Yeah. They're not doing it at the moment. OK. One of the resources that Becky has been underusing in her problem-solving lessons is her interactive whiteboard. Pally's brought along some resources that she's developed and tried in similar schools. She's all too aware of the difficulties many teachers have setting mathematical problems for children. Before we start our problem, I want you to understand what the problem is about. The first time I read this problem, I got so confused because I didn't know what it meant. So what I'm going to do is introduce you to the farmer. OK, that's the farmer. Hi, kids, I've got a problem that needs solving. Do you think you can help me? Yeah, yeah you can. 24 sheep have to be shepherded into three pens of different sizes. There must be a different even number of sheep in each pen. The smallest pen must contain the smallest number of sheep. The largest pen, the largest number. How many sheep might the dog try to get into each pen? Find as many different ways as you can. One of the ways to improve team teaching and problem solving is to involve an expert or mentor in team teaching a lesson. Whilst the pupils benefit from having two teachers delivering the lesson in an upbeat style, Becky is also picking up tips from Pally. So what does it mean if we're going to solve something systematically, Miss Miller? Well, you remember when we've done about chronological order in our literacy lessons? Yeah. It's a bit like that, isn't it, Mr. It is. Hull? It's like working in a systematic order. You work from one place to another. Personally, I really enjoy teaching with someone else, having someone else to bounce back ideas from it. It's almost like a double act sort of thing. You've both got each other to help out and you're both there to support the children as well. At these numbers, these are your numbers. I'm going to give you a set time. The way that we actually decided to do the lesson is we broke it into smaller sections rather than having one main activity and a smaller starter task. We actually started them off, we made the objective clear to them, we gave them some set criteria, which we referred to all the way through as well, which really helped them. One of the main barriers to the understanding of a maths problem is the language that surrounds it. Getting the children to highlight key mathematical words exposes the problem as the language peels away. This has a real impact on those children who have English as an additional language. Do you think that the sheep is important? Do you think it would matter if it was elephants or dogs or cats? So do you think you need that bit highlighted? Do you think the number's important? Yeah. OK. Tell you what, get a pencil. Just cross out the sheet bit, because you don't need that bit. OK. What else do you think's important? 
Arusa is beginning to concentrate on the concept and meaning of the problem. She's sorted it out from the language. Let's have a look. What have you put here, Alicia? Each pen must have a different even number. Is that telling us a main thing? Do you think that could be one of our rules? OK, what else have we got? Do we need to know that they're entering the sheepdog trial? Is no, that important? No, no because, it, yeah. because, because it, has, it could be a cow, it could be a car. Okay. So it doesn't matter what it is. No. What are we working with then? We're um, working with 24, 24 sheep. 24. So it doesn't matter whether it's 24 sheep. It could be 24 cows in a car park. It could be anything else. So good. So what information will we need from here then? Um, yeah. Different sizes. Different pens. 24. 24, good. Different sizes. Okay, why do you need different sizes to have here? Because um, like, you could be. You could do eight, eight, eight if you don't have different size. Okay. And you could do 20, 2 and 2. Okay, they good. Make Just to enhance what they'd already found out about the problem, we actually took them into the hall um, and engaged them in a practical activity which worked really well for the kinesthetic learners. And it actually involved the children moving, the children being part of the problem. We made them the sheep. Two there. I can't put one there, so I'm going to put no, two so there. That's an even number. But does that meet all the rules? No. Oh. Why not? So how? In the smallest uh, uh, <coughs> pen, you got two. So you have you have you have to have the you have to have different numbers in the uh, in the um, medium pe pen. So I've got two, four. Can you six over here come and squeeze onto the mat? And four of you. Okay. So that's six and four, so that's ten. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Let me just check this against the rules. Miss Miller, can you remind us about the rules and we'll check for you? An even number of sheep in each pen. A different even number. Different so even two. number. Pally's subtle mentoring of Becky to ensure her language exactly matches that of the problem gives the children a model of the key rules. Smallest number of sheep in the smallest pen. Two is our smallest number. It's the smallest pen. Yes? Yeah. And the largest number of sheep in the largest pen. Oh, we can see that, can't we? Yeah. Right, you know what? I think we found one possibility. Two, four and eighteen. Think about what you'd like to do to find your next possibility. So would you change the number of sheep in the smallest pen or would you change the number of sheep in the middle pen? How many could we put in the middle pen now? Two more. <coughs> Fantastic, two more. Do you want to stand up, Arusa? Do you want to stand up, Connor? And we're going to put you into the middle pen. We had four and 18. What have we got now? Two, six and 16. Two, six. We let them come back into the classroom and explore the problem in pairs. Having some hands-on experience, they were first involved with that problem and they'd come back into the problem. And having some practical experience again of moving the sheep around into the three different pens. In the envelopes, you've got three pieces of card. What do you think these represent, Akeeb? The pens. The pens, just like the mats in the hall. You've also got a copy of the rules. Why do you think you've got these, Eba? So you know what's going on. So you mean that you have to keep referring to these to check. You've also got in your envelope 24 little cutout sheep, OK? I want you to find as many answers as you can with only two sheep in the smallest pen. Start with what we've done in the hall. So we had two, and then in our medium pen we had Four. How many are we going to put in the first pen, in the smallest pen? Ten. 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 So what would you go on to next? Ten. Ten. Six. There you go. Work with the smallest number. Does that answer our questions? Do our answers meet the rules? Yeah. yeah. Have we got all the possibilities? Yes. Yeah. How do we know then? Because we've done it systematically. Fantastic. We've done it 
organised how we would work systematically. During the highlighting activity, I noticed that Shakib had actually gone one step ahead. He'd only had to go with the sheet twice, and then he moved on to numbers straight away. So he made rapid progress, you know, very quickly. So then at that point, we thought, no, how can we move him on now? What I'll do then, as a homework I'm challenge, joking. I'm going to give you 51 sheep. Mm. Odd numbers only. Odd numbers only. And the same for these two rules, OK? So it's 51. Shaggy. I'm on but number two. I'm on 30. You can't do that. That means you're finished. 51 Mr. sheep. This is making it harder for us. Odd numbers and those two it's rules 30, apply. 50, 50, 50. We also took some photos as we were going round, and that was for the pupils to refer back to. And that was an activity that worked really well because they could see their own work and they could see how some of us try and fail and they could see other people's work as well and realise that it wasn't everyone else getting it right, that it was a real mixture. And that was nice because they explained to us what was wrong and what wasn't and they referred back to the rules, which again showed us that they completely understood it. Jackie, looking at this first picture, and I think this was taken from that orange table, Got two, two and twenty. Is that a possibility? Uh, no. Why not? Because you know, the smallest and the middle is uh, just the numbers the same. The numbers are the same. What have they got to be? Uh, two, four and eighteen. They've got to be two, four and eighteen. Can you see that one anywhere? Shakib's ready to handle similar problems without concrete apparatus. But Pally's keen to see how many of the class can progress without relying on manipulating the actual sheep. Oh, I wonder who's got a wrong answer for us. They might tell us which ones are right. Connor. Four add twelve. Add eight is wrong because the there's a because in the middle one it's bigger than the big it's than got the more. large pen. Yeah. yeah? Was that one of our rules? <coughs> That it had to, the middle pen had to be smaller than the large pen. Well done, you've remembered. You found one of our mistakes, Mr. Hart. The top four are all right. They're all right. Well done. Does everyone agree? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's Mr. Farmer back. Thanks, Year Five. With your help, I will be able to arrange the sheep in seven different ways. I think you have worked absolutely fantastically today, haven't they, Miss Miller? I think they have, and we've even got someone giving them a clap. Yeah. And you know, I've actually not worked in a Year 5 class before, where by the end of the lesson, everyone has found seven different answers. Mm -hmm. So I think you all deserve a good pat on the back. Well done. It gave myself a sense of achievement, because I know that my support within that lesson actually helped those pupils to definitely gain understanding of, of finding all possibilities to meet the learning objective. Since working with Pally and with the Teacher of the Future programme, it's meant that I have realised how enthusiastic you can make pupils and how much you can engage them and how much you can change the way they learn and what they learn as a result of it, which is an absolutely fabulous feeling as a teacher because you realise that they do enjoy it and there are ways to get them into it and get them involved as well.